This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason. What do you got on tap for us today? Well, it's like you know, we spent years upon years upon years talking about one particular um, Star franchise. And that's Star Wars. I mean, God knows, like, I've done, like, enough podcasts, you know, like, about talking about how, how I've been, like, invested in, like, you know, st- like Star Wars is, you know, comics presence. You know, from how I eventually got invested in it from, like, you know, like the Dark Horse comics to um how um how Marvel has like you know taken up the reins of things. But you know what Star Franchise I haven't talked about at all? Star Trek. I mean, this is like something that I've been like, you know, just as invested in over the years. Well, not just years, decades, really. It's like I've like, you know, watched you know a Star Trek series over decades. It's like and all it's like I've I don't enjoy them, like particularly like you know. It's not going to surprise you to let you know that, hey, you know, like, I really liked Star Trek Next Generation because I am a Star Trek fan of a certain age. And, you know, when I say that, you know, hey, when I, when um they had that, you know, cliffhanger where it's like, you know, Captain Picard like, had been revealed to be like the cutest of Borg, it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Are they going to actually like, kill Captain Picard over this like Star Trek cliffhanger? Yeah, that's 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 how how long I've been like you know following like Trek and all. It's like, and we all know how that that turned out, <laughs> but um, but you know, it's like I've I've been like invested in like you know Trek for a good long while. It's like, and you know, while I've enjoyed it, you know, like Trek hasn't had like a as much as a uh, like a different presence at, in comics as Star Trek Star Wars has over like over the years. But let's uh, flat. Flash forward back to like you know a couple months to uh, to like WonderCon earlier this year when I went to like the IDW panel at at WonderCon when you know here I am just you know listening to them talking about like the, a lot of the people the creatives talk about their um like like their new series and all and one of the creators there is um one um Jackson Lansing who um was talking about the uh, the Star Trek series that he's writing with his, his writing partner, Colin Kelly. Now, Lansing and Kelly have written a lot of comics over the years. A lot of stuff that, you know, I've just kind of like, you know, glossed over because, you know, it's like, I hear about them writing stuff, but I don't hear that it's like, you know, good. I mean, well, it's not bad, but, you know, not just kind of like the, the whole, like, oh, we're like, you're writing stuff that gets like, you know, multiple reprints that gets like, you know, like the fan base invested in, in stuff and all. But then it's like I hear um Lance talk about um how he how he and um Kelly are thoroughly invested in like the uh the continuity of Trek at this time because they are basically like you know promoting like the uh like the, the Star Trek series they're writing at, at this at this time when it's set in the next generation era. Um and basically it's like you know the and how they're like you know really passionate about getting the continuity right, not just you know in terms of you know observing like a Established Trek continuity as seen in Next Generation, D69, and Voyager, but also um, like Lower Decks as well. In fact, he was just like, you know, talking about how he just wanted to get, you now he, he's calling, you know, Mick McMahon, the creator of, oh, sorry, Mike McMahon, the creator of um, Lower Decks. And he, you know, I want to get one of your guys on my new Star Trek series. Like, how can I do that? And like, McMahon's like, you know, no, I'm not sure I want to do that. Like, you know, and Lance is like, is like, you know, dude, I really want to do this. And so, like, that's how we get um, Shax in the uh, new, um, like, ongoing Trek series, that I've written by um, Kelly and Lan- Lanzig. And also, like, you know, like, that's also like you know part of the like the uh, Defiance series, written by um, like like Mar- like a established Marvel writer, um, Christopher Kent Kentwell, and his and his Iron Iron Man artist, um, like Angel, Angel and Zueta, like the in part of the Defiance series, like they're like doing their like they've they've got their own like you know Star Trek series like going on between these series and just like uh, going on to this like you know like crossover called Day of Blood, which basically deals with a lot of like you know like Klingon era like um stuff stuff as well. So here's the thing: I uh, hear him like, talk about this. And I think like wow, like this is a guy who is really passionate uh, Trek, someone who like you know like wants to observe the continuity. Like wow, it's like I want to like you know like see where he's going with this. Here's the thing. Um, I'm not gonna like buy his um, like Trek series right now because 25 bucks for a uh, five issue collection of a uh, 
of a hardcover like you know Star Trek series like seems like you know really like a lot and I'm not gonna go that go that way but here's the thing he um Lansing and Kelly did Star Trek year five which is basically story of the uh, final year of the star starship the starship enterprises five year journey which you know I mean like we We've heard about like that Star Trek's like you know the Enterprise's five year journey it's like you know from the like, from the uh, voiceover of the original series. I mean this is like a Captain Kirk told it's like in every episode. So like how does this end, man? We didn't find out because you know like the series original series only lasted um, three years. And if you're wondering like yo wait a second why are you talking about like you know Star Trek Year Five like in this podcast when like there's like a year four and all well IDW didn't like uh like give us like a really detailed year four i mean like yeah they did some comics about that but um year five was the one that um they apparently give a gave a really dedicated um like comics book series to and when i say like dedicated comic book series they did like 25 issues plus a couple specials as well and while um Langsing and Kelly, like you know, they um they were like writing like you know key issues in this series, they also like were the showrunners for this. Basically, it's kind of like when you're doing this, when they were when they were doing this, it's like they were just like you know spotlighting a lot of um like they're saying like, establishing the uh like the guidelines that um they were writing by and also its guest writers were writing by. And they had some pretty um pretty like uh Pretty solid writers who are like you know like doing this. Um, someone who I like, like Jody Hauser, who did some great Star Wars comics over over Marvel, and Brett and Easton, who also did some you know decent stuff like with what we're doing here as well. But um, basically, Star Trek Year Five is basically like the story of uh, you know the Enterprise's final year, and it's also kind of like you know kind of a bridge of sorts to uh, to the uh, like. It's like just Star Trek the motion picture, it's like in 1979 because you know it's like these guys are nothing if not like you know observant of continuity. It's like in all, and overall, it's like I think it's all right, but um, I also have someone here, someone who everyone here knows. It's like who's also has like you know very like specific opinions about Star Trek. Like um, John, uh, you got any thoughts about you know how this all went? or the volumes I sent you and all, because yeah. Yeah. So, um, I do actually, um, and I'm just going to point out a couple of things real quick. First of all, it's timely that we do this podcast on star Trek because, uh, it just passed a little milestone and that's its birthday. Yeah. It's like, I, I didn't plan this, but like, that's, that's how it worked out really. First episode, September 8th, 1966. It is 57 years old. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's fairly incredible. Cause if you think about it, that is like, um, uh, you know, in terms of franchises, right. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that we had that there. So um, because it's um, it, it's 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 timely. And I think that that's um, uh, I think that's lots of fun. So but you asked me a question. And the question is, what did I think of this? Is that what, what you asked? Yes. So I I think it's OK. I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be very honest with you. Um, and uh and you'll have to know that I'm I'm pretty much an, an old school Star Trek fan. Now it doesn't mean that I dislike, um, like like the Next Generation or anything based in that universe. Or dude, oh, it's like that like, universe we, essentially is Star Trek. So I think that everyone that's... should know. It's like you were the one who like, got me into like Lower Decks. It's like I would yeah. not be talking about Lower Decks yeah. or invested in it without your. Well, and I like lower decks. I really do. So, um, however, um, you know, if you were to say, oh, so you've seen all the original television series, you know, I have them on Blu-ray, I had them on DVD. I have had them, you know, uh, I watched them in syndication when they were on television um, uh, being broadcast. I'll say it that way. Um, not like when they were originally broadcast. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not that old. 
Um, but, uh, you know, so, and I have some, I have some opinions about that as well. So, you know, just, just as just straight up, you know, I would say that I don't think that every, you know, just because I'm a fan of the original series doesn't mean that I'm a fan of every episode. I think that there are some really bad episodes, in fact. Um, so, and uh, this particular, you know, um, this particular series here, um, it's interesting. And clearly the people know, you know, that are writing it, uh, you know, they know their track because you can see it in the references that they put in there. Um, um, however, yeah, I, I did not think, it just as of overall opinion, I didn't think it was okay. It wasn't great. Um, and I can get into those details later, but I don't want to like, I, I want to kind of let you drive the conversation a bit here, sir. Okay. Cause um, I, I mean, it's like, I, I thought, yeah, I thought it was all right as well. It's like, I mean, like Kelly and Lansing, I mean, I think the series benefits from having a, uh, a solid like point of view from like, you know, like one creative team, basically saying like you know okay this is where we're going and all it's like but everyone here to like like everyone who's like joining us it's like they, you can just you know like go wherever you want like in the episodes in the space that we give give you it's like and all because because like each like each volume and this is like a four volume series it's like they uh they've got like a pretty solid like you know like road, road and all and it starts with the tholians it's like because the first because the first volume basically introduces us to you know like a mass like a massacre at um the a following colony like a Lloyd Zeta nine, and um it's like an enterprise like you know investigating there and finding like you know one survivor like a Tholian named Bright Eyes, and them trying them eventually like you know making it like establishing a level of communication to um establish that you know that that Bright Eyes wants them to uh, wants them to like you know wants them to save them or stay alive it's like and that's kind of like what drives like the um like what drives like the storylines going going forward and um from there it's like you know it's like we get like a lot of like you know like 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 from, from your trek stuff just you know like establishing like you know communications between like you know familiar like alien species it's like and also just you know callbacks to um like familiar trek episodes like um Sigma Iota too, you know, it's like the um the, the alien, like the the uh, gangster planet from a piece of the action, because we all remember that, John, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's also, well, I would say that the design of the Tholians actually doesn't harken back; kind of harkens forward in a backward sort of way. That is no, the Tholians so, themselves. Yeah, because I mean, like it's interesting. It was interesting to learn, like while well, like we. I actually do a bit of research for this podcast in like, I was actually like, you know, had to watch some episodes of like Star Trek that I hadn't seen before, such as the Tholian web and um, assignment earth. And also the enterprise episodes um, in a mirror darkly and um, future tense. Cause yeah, it's like, I mean, it's interesting to see that, you know, that enterprise actually defined the uh, look of the, of the Tholians. It's like, like from um, like in a, like in a mirror dark darkly and all and and and, you know and the reason why i i think that that's a good choice on on the you know writer's behalf or the artist's behalf you know um because number one it's it's a nice visual cue but also number two in the original tele you know original series the tholian web we only really see their head (laughs) so yeah that's all we have we know that they're not the same type of a you know they're not like um for lack of a word not the same as humanoid type of aliens so um you know one could argue that you know if you have a spite you know you have spider like or crab like appendages that you're not really a human uh type of alien but uh you know and i think that that was a, a good choice on their behalf you know because it is something within canon they decided to pull it in yeah, it's like I, and I, I and overall it's like you know for these um volumes like I, I appreciate the fact that you know like they did a good job of developing like the Tholian um like mindset because like you know it's it's like they, they're trying to figure like 
I can't think they were trying to like you know draw on like an antagonistic alien race, but just like an alien race that had been developed like in Star Trek can can before. It's like and just like I, was, I think that they did a good job like over that over the course course of these volumes, but also you know it's like I think that you know in terms of like you know like the uh, main antagonist like you know for um this series, well it's like I think this is something that you know that John you may be more qualified to comment on because. When I uh, when I started reading this, I had no idea who the hell Gary Seven was. So, yeah. so yeah, and Gary Seven, he's human. Yeah, <laughs> so like so human, human in quotation marks, really. Yeah. So, in Assignment Earth, um, Gary Seven is, um, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna just say this. Assignment Earth is not one of my favorite episodes in the, in the original. Yeah, that, that, that's fair. Um, it's not. Um, because it's um, it was kind of written as a backdoor pl uh, plot, a pilot, sorry, pilot to a potential series with a very young Terry Gar. And um, and then I forget the actor's name who plays Gary. Oh, Sutton. Robert Lansing. Oh, Robert Lansing. Thank you. So, you know. And obviously, we don't have that series, so it didn't work. But that's okay. Um, I, I'm totally fine with living without it. Um, <laughs> um, I can't imagine what any kind of a spinoff from the original Star Trek would be like. To be honest, with you. Um, <laughs> just, it's they would just like I imagine like any time Star Trek spinoff would just be like, you know spinning it off further from Star Trek continuity. And so like you know, so, hey, like yeah. Yeah. So true. It's sort of like, mm, all right, uh, you're gonna have Kirk and Spock drop by once in a while, anyway, um, <laughs> or you know, whatever. So I, I, I admit it's like it's got. It was kind of interesting to see like you know Kirk and Spock being like the, the people who had more knowledge of what was going on than um the guy from outside time and all. Yeah. So. So yeah. So he's. Yeah, he's a human who has been raised by these aliens to um, fulfill a mission. And um, in the Assignment Earth episode, as you recently seen or if you saw, um, it is to um, to cause a a potential nuclear disaster to emphasize to the people of the Earth, hey you know stop playing around with atom bombs and shit like that <laughs> so yeah um that's that's basically it you know um you know and if you think about um i'll dive a little bit into oh shall we call it you know a little bit into uh we'll call it you fall you know like alien encounters or, or what people have claimed you know when people have claimed to have had like and i i'm not going to say that they do happen or don't happen like one of the things that you do hear from people who have encountered so-called aliens is like they're concerned that we're going to nuke ourselves. And it's actually a science fiction <laughs> concept as well. It's a science fiction trope, to be honest with you. Like, hey, the aliens are here to warn us, you know, hey, you know, um, stop screwing around with, you know, with 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 stuff that's, you know, where you're going to destroy. I almost think like, you know, when I saw that movie, it's, I think it's called a rifle or something with uh, Amy Adams in it. Um, oh, okay. Is that what it was? I don't know if that, I forget. Uh, maybe. No, that, you're right. You're right. That's what it's called. I think they had a similar message or something like that. Um, it's like the so, idea was like, you know, like the, uh, I think like, the, like learning the aliens language, basically like, you know, like rewrote our, like, you know, perception of time. Yeah. And there, yeah. So it was. Um, it's kind of interesting, but that's a. It, it's. It, we'll just. We'll just shelf that under the science fiction trope, of you know, aliens have come here to do that. Now, I think that that's. Uh, you know, to to warn humans of it, special. But now that you're like, but what about the Enterprise? So the Enterprise, for some reason, this is why I'm not very happy with this episode, has decided that you know, hey, we could just take Johnson in the past. Um, because yeah, it's what like, happened it's before, like... in, when it happened before in Star Trek, you know, it was an accident. <laughs> so now it's like, no, we just want to do it. And I'll admit that they they borrowed this premise a couple other times, specifically in Star Trek for the Voyage Home. Um, 
to you know save the whales yeah uh, however <laughs> on this one i'd say yeah it's like there are and then all of a sudden you know they pick up gary seven's transporter beam they're like hey we're picking up and then they beam he beams on the enterprise because he's actually beaming to someplace on earth so yeah there's that and that's it's how synchronicity man yeah and i believe that this is actually covered a bit in the flashback uh chapter or episode as they call it in this uh in this set right yeah it's like they uh like they did they did hit a, a whole a whole issue to uh to how just you know like what um that gary seven how gary seven has been groomed you know for like you know preserving the uh the the desired timeline by his like organization aegis which on one hand it's like you know wow it's like you've got another like you know like or secret organization that is like you know dedicated to manipulating things from outside time like in like in the current era which on one hand it's like didn't they do wasn't that that was kind of like something like that everyone was doing in enterprise but here it's like you know okay we're doing this as well which on one hand it's like okay it's like i can understand that you know you look at um what they were doing in assignment earth and like this is something that was like relatively unexplored because it was like a series that was not picked up as a backdoor pilot so it's kind of like you know we're just gonna you know run with that and it's like okay but um we've kind of seen this for like in trek in trek lore but i don't know it's like the way i make this work is that i keep thinking of the aegis as kind of like a uh organization that was kind of like you know like they're kind of like, like the blackberry of like time manipulation it's like they uh they had like a good thing going like you know while they were um like you know the only people like in this time but then you know when you know federation came around and they federation like was also you know messing with time and all it's like you know they kind of you know lost it like like in terms of like how things went i mean like, i don't know if that like works that's like my head canon for this are you asking me if that yeah works? it's like i mean like it, it, i think it's the only thing that kind of like, you know makes like aegis work like in terms of like a uh, extra dimensional like you know time like like time manipulation organization it's like you know they were good at one point but then you know like like they they lost they started losing it it turned once on the federation like you know was able to like you know start messing with time on their own end yeah i don't know how i felt about that that was one of those things that i was like yeah a little bit mm, the concept is kind of based upon what i know you know and kind of how they presented it you know kind of felt a little like weird so i didn't uh, yeah it wasn't really my favorite uh like thing however it's their story they wrote it that way so <laughs> yeah because like that's kind of like the um the main um like plot thread that um lansing and kelly like, are pursuing here and on one hand it's like good for them in terms of like you know trying to make a uh it's like like a uh kind of like i don't want to say like mediocre episode of trek work but you know hey just trying to like you know make this uh like like this like loose plot thread from from trek you know like make like working there like in their own end it's like but overall it's like i don't know i think that they they do all right it's like i can't say that you know like anything they do just makes you go like oh man it's like this is like you know what i want to see as far as trek trek like you know, observing like continuity in the future future and all because like overall it's like it's it's perfectly fine i mean it's like i think they do solid work but like in terms of like you know you know what um it's like like how, how things go it's like I mean, yeah they get caught in another Thol tholian web um they have to like you know mix things up with gary seven and isis um oh and the uh like the, the uh two-parter where um they get where um kirk has to like throw down with like a klingon judge and um the enterprise and enterprise realizes that you know oh the uh people from the five-year missions are being um like experiment on by the federation and all that's that's a thing right john yeah um yeah it is um and yeah uh, were you gonna say anything else about that piece <laughs> I, I don't know so like i look at this and think you know okay it's like you know it's one thing for like you know for 
for Kirk and company to like to basically say that hey, you know, it's like we're it's like you know, like like we're we're the good guys and all. It's like we're just like you know, it's like you know, like like showing you like showing the Federation the right way to do things. But you know, for for the Federation for them to like you know basically like like come in and say like oh wait the Federation is experimenting on like the uh, the people who've come back from five year missions like that just seems like really fucked up man. It's like I mean even like even beyond like you know the the standard standard boundaries of a like you know the Federation is doing like you know questionable shit that you know like the Enterprise has to like like establish has to like you know set right and all. It's like. I mean, it's like on one hand, it's like I like the idea that you know that a uh, Klingon is basically like you know calling, it's just like you know trying to uh, kill Kirk, uh, you know, for just like all all his disrespect that he's done to the Klingon Empire, but in a way that you know, like, hey, you know, it's like I hate I hate you for what you've done, and I'm just gonna like you know kill you just just to you know, like, you know to establish to erase our erase our dishonor, regardless of whether or not it's actually dishonor or not. That was kind of interesting, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you know them kind of pulling the whole. Oh, hey, I've never seen a Klingon look like you before. That's an <laughs> interesting little like okay continuity nod there because we're we're dealing with, um, uh, for lack of a better word, like the bumpy headed Klingons. So yeah, <laughs> so I thought that that was at the very least interesting, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting indeed. <laughs> um, oh, oh, did you like seeing them Harry Mudd again as the uh, candidate for the originalist? Yeah, so there's something else that I'm kind of a little bit like, all right, I get it. I see what you're doing there. But now you're, you're writing about the uh, the pre- our present day in your future story. Yeah, well, and you know, it's interesting is the guy who played the original Harry Mudd was actually quite a... Uh, he did a lot of voice acting for um, uh, cartoons and things like that. Oh, interesting. And, yeah, he actually did. Um, uh, so he, he he's actually, you know, whenever I... Especially in the Transformers comics. Uh, not comics, I'm sorry. Cartoon, the G1 cartoons. He actually did a lot. Um, <laughs> um, so there's another thing there. And by the way, never mind. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so, yeah... Um, yeah, that was interesting, but yeah, so um, it's Harry Mudd, <laughs> everyone. So remember Harry Mudd, um, and they at least gave him, a, you know, they told him, you know, they give the audience, you the readers, you know, like, hey, didn't isn't this where we left you last? And like, he's like, and yeah, and here's well, here's how things worked out. So mm-hmm. you know, that's fine and dandy at all. So yeah. Yeah, and I and one thing like I kind of appreciate like you know how like you know the writers observe con- continuity here. In fact, like you know, there's a uh, in fact in the final volume there's a two part story where like Spock winds up transported back to the time of Vulcan Awakening, like where um Surak is um you know like establishing like the, lo- the tenets of Vulcan logic like in his it's like over over the planet and. Spock finds out that you know, wait a second, like this isn't actually um as uh as bloodless as I was led to expect and all. And that was that was kind of interesting to see, especially in the sense that you know, like it, it eventually leads um Spock to like you know determine that like hey, you know, like I want to recommit to like my Vulcan heritage and um they say that you know like like go go over Vulcan and like you know like lead like you know embrace like you know logic over like human like you know like human principles so i guess like you know i uh like it's been a while since i've seen like you know star trek motion picture but john like you know how did um spock you know like wind up in that like start in that movie and all well um so you see spock the first time you see spock in that movie just as a refresher course here he's on Vulcan and he's about to receive the the essentially his graduation into the discipline of Kolonar which is the purging of all emotion and he basically says he just stops he stops them from putting the little little symbolic medal around his neck 
and the high priestess mind melds with them and says, hmm, okay, you got issues. I'm going to put it and paraphrase it. Um, <laughs> you really haven't achieved this. And she drops the medal on the ground and that pretty much. <laughs> However, hmm. it's fairly evident to the next time that you see Spock and he's joining the Enterprise crew that, man, it's like, like he is completely like he is a an emotional nothing he is uh you probably get more emotion out of your computer actually so huh <laughs> so yeah he's pretty uh he's pretty uh you know like uh, he he after he comes in you know he he joins him via a courier shuttle and he's like yeah i can solve your problems with your warp drive um he solves the problems with the warp drive and then Kirk calls him to his quarters and McCoy tags along because because McCoy. Yeah. <laughs> and he says and and he's like, hey, didn't you weren't you going to do this and that? And, you know, and like they want to like chat it up like old times. And he's just kind of like not here for that. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, that's right. That's what he does. And then and then. Kirk literally pleads for him to sit down. He tells him like three times, just like sit down, like relax. Like, you know, <laughs> this, is a, this is a guy who just spent maybe potentially a few years doing a purging of all emotions. And so he's just like, all right, whatever you say. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, that's that's kind of um, that's kind of how we see him in the in the motion picture. But yeah that's it and okay. and it's a, he's being called by a consciousness and that's the reason why he's on the on the journey good stuff okay and also it's like and also like you know it's just about every arc of this of year five they do it's like you know mccoy does like a i'm not a doctor it's like i'm a blank type, yeah. type thing yeah oh yeah um although i do believe in like i think the one of the issues he literally is asking him to be a doctor <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> i did think that that was kind of that had its, its own sense of irony there like hey you need, you need to you're the doctor you fix this so, yeah um so yeah um yeah indeed um yeah so uh yeah so far yeah that's that's pretty much how it works out yeah it's like and i think like overall it's like i mean like what we're doing you're dealing here with this is perfectly fine it's like i mean like it's you know pretty poor pro formula as far as like start Star Trek goes i mean in terms of like just you know hey we're trying to find like you know like emotional or intellectual ways of dealing with it's like with, with alien species it's like i think they do a good job with of that with the uh with the tholians over the court or especially with bright eyes over the course of the, the volume as well in fact like like bright eyes like turns out to be like the main it's like you know like focus of like you know like a alien interaction over the cor course of the series as um it's like as gary sevens um like organization aegis basically like touches them as beast being like the uh oh like you know they're like the uh like the main like you know like like alien organization that would that, that was say, like you know going to preserve like you know galactic black peace like over the next thousand years and all because we uh because in the final volume we learned that um that, that apparently there's going to be like you know years of war breaking out between all the major um like you know factions in the in the federation like spearheaded by the borg as well it's like and like only by like embracing the uh, crystalline perfection of the tholians can we uh achieve like eternal peace as well which you know it's like if you uh read um like christopher cantwell who as i mentioned earlier like is doing like the defiance series um, for for IDW, like he uh, like he basically like, like his his plan his plan for Michael Korvac in his Iron Man series basically involved that like like them being um like all universal life being like a, a crystalline like entity and then um Tony Stark going like man fuck no that's not right <laughs> it's like yeah it's like that's kind of like that's kind of what happens here I mean I, I'm not saying that this is like that they were copying that but it's just kind of like a uh, like a just like you know, like minds thinking alike here, in the sense that you know, hey, you know, like like people like you're thinking like, yeah, what's what's the ideal personalization of of life here? Like, you know, it's crystalline entities, you know, existing, existing in harmony. 
and nope, that's not gonna like fly here because you know, like, like, because Trek, you know, like they still they still respect you know individual individual expression as all like as well. And on one hand, it's like I look at you know what they're doing here in terms of, like you know like the them saying like oh oh this is what like you know like life is gonna be like for like the next thousand years like in terms of, like you know interstellar war. Well, you know that um. I mentioned that um, Lansing and Kelly are currently writing the uh, like the current like you know Star Trek series for IDW, so I really believe that they're going to like you know address this like on their own terms, which you know cool and all, but at the same time I really really like it if they weren't going to do it in hardcover because man, it's like yeah you got to be really special like if you're going to do this in hardcover for me, <laughs> especially if you're doing like you know a five issue collection and all. And yeah, congratulations on getting that Eisner nomination for like you know best new uh, best new series and all. But no, that's not going to move the needle on my end. But overall, it's like I mean, I did you know like these um these like uh, this this old story of Star Trek Year Five because it also did a good story of just you know Kirk. And um, Spock and everyone just like you know, addri- like coming to coming to terms with the fact that you know, hey, we were like you know, really really good together, and at the end, you know, we're not going to be together as well. I mean, yeah, it's like some of these people are going to work together with Kirk now that he's an admiral and all, but you know, like Spock is going to Vulcan, Bones is retiring, and okay, so um. Like a McCoy, like yeah, he's gonna be on the Enterprise as well, but um, like Kirk is just gonna be like you know admiral, admiraling and all, along with um Sulu, Chekhov, and Uhura. It's like on the on their end, and you know it's like I, I, I think that you know like they did a good job of just you know like bring bringing like an end to that you know specific you know era era of Trek. It's especially like you know in the sense that you know hey we're we also got like you know got to bridge things you know, to the, uh, like, to the movie as well. And I don't know, I guess, John, you'd probably be able to speak to that better than I I could. Or, like, in terms of, like, you know, like, how everyone wound up in, um, like, in, like, you know, Star Trek the movie and all. I mean, like, are you talking about where everyone winds up? Like, you do see yeah. that, you know... Um... Like you mentioned, like, it was, like, Spock went up on Vulcan, and yeah. McCoy, it's, like, was just kind of, like, they they brought him in yeah or... well okay so so yeah so spock has his ulterior motives in that movie uh the motion picture if you will because he's like it, you know we gotta find v'ger and that's yeah it's like uh, that's the reason why i'm here and that's why i mean it's like a little bit of ulterior motive and then, but the other side of it is um you know before because there's this Okay, so the premise of the motion picture is that, you know, the first Star Trek movie, we'll call it, is that there's a big alien cloud spaceship thing headed right for Earth. They're like, yeah, this is probably a problem. And, you know, when it passes through Klingon space, it just pretty much destroys the vessels they send at it because, you know, I mean, Klingons firing torpedoes and stuff. Um, and this thing just you know wipes it out, wipes out one of the. the oh man, if it's destroying the Klingons, it's got to be like a big fucking deal, man. Yeah, exactly. Like it wiped out our base, and it's headed right for us. So, the connect the dots pieces here are like, well, it's probably going to wipe us out too. So this is the thing, the reason. Well, Spock is somehow understanding this consciousness of this thing that's out there. So you know, um. So Kirk's like, you know what? I'm an admiral, but you know what, bitch? I want to be a captain again. <laughs> so he goes, you know what? I'm going to, you know, hey, Captain Decker. Well, you're now commander. I'm the captain. So he goes, <laughs> yep. And so, um, well, he doesn't really. It's, it's one, of the, one of the rare, rare instances in Star Trek where the admiral is like not being the villain here. Yeah. Well, and and essentially, you know, um, so and because it's the motion picture and the very first one, of course, the Enterprise looks different. It is different. They write this into the story as like, yeah, it's just undergoing this giant refit and this new captain they have, you know, knows these systems. And Admiral Kirk, my, you know. You haven't logged any time in there. Anyway, so um, regardless, so he gets his command back, and before he launches, he's like, I need to assemble all the crew. 
He's like, I need, I need my homie, Mister Doctor McCoy. You know, so he, so so he's like, he gets him. And he's like, you know, he beams him up, and he's like, you know, he, and you see, he's, he's got the beard. He's got, he's got like the seventies. Yeah, he's got, dress. He looks like he came right out of a disco. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, and, and he's like, you drafted me. And he's like, oh, well, whatever. And he just grumbles and he walks on, you know. So, um, but, you know, that's kind of like how they pull. And the rest of the crew, I think they're just there. I mean, like, there's Sulu and Chekhov. Like, these guys, you know, I mean, they're there. Like, they were all already there. I, because, they're already there. Yeah. The only people you're missing were Bones, which you got. And then he had to get Spock, which... They had no idea where they were going to get a Spock, so whatever. He just shows up, right? Because, you know, alien creature thing, well, spaceship thing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's basically that's basically it. So, I mean, and so it reassembles the cast. And, yeah, it's, um, you know, actually, I like that movie. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Although I like it, and then there's parts of it that I don't like. It's just. Because, so director's cut or like cinematic cut? Um, you know, I like both in some ways because one's like watching a really bad play, and the other one's like watching like, oh, this is what it could have been. Huh. So actually, I like the director's cut a little bit better because they use the C you know they threw in CG effects to kind of fix things. So it, it's it, like it's like a proper like you know like re remaster like for my oh yeah my, yeah and actually I had the original DVD and then they finally remastered it like maybe a few years ago so well, that's good so now I have the Blu-ray version and that's nice um and it looks good so that's the important thing so um yeah so you know it's assembling the crew and the cast all back together and that's kind of nice right you okay know you know and he's still an admiral though it's a thing but yeah yeah it's like we we all know where that's going because we have the benefit of hindsight now yeah well you know the second movie kind of addresses this but um but yeah so um i guess if you're asking me my overall opinion of like this set of comics right here i think and that's what you're asking me i'm gonna give yes. you my opinion so uh, Okay, so um, I think that these uh, the guys who are writing this, they did a fine job of like calling out references and pulling things into a plot that you understood before. So Gary Seven is one of those things. Um, Tholians are another thing, right? Um, so just just some of the bigger ones that, that stick out in my head. I think that that's cool. Um, that's fine. Sure. You can do that. I, I don't know how I feel about like Gary seven and, and nicest them being this, uh, this organ, you know, like kind of changing some of the premises that were established in the episode. Okay, fine. I'm, it, I'm it's okay. also another like temporal cold war, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. Okay. We're, we're not going to complain too much about that. I understand what you're doing there. Um, I think that they're a little bit heavy handed, though, when it comes to like just quoting and pulling things from all the episodes. It's like, and in my opinion, like I think a good Star Trek story doesn't necessarily need to always lean on like its sort like its other material to strengthen your own. And and I know that like like so in some ways this thing reads like a fan fiction hmm. and i'll be very honest with you it's like oh well we know that you know there is a gary seven there's tholians there's this is so um i think that the only thing that i thought was kind of original was in the second volume okay um it is the i forget the name of those the the aliens um but oh it's like the like was it like i like the uh, uh, isla and like the, the 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 aquatic aliens like who Sulu fell in love with. Yeah, yeah. Thing. I thought that was more interesting. Uh, I thought you know, so giving a compliment and a, you know where a compliment is due. I think that's more interesting as a concept. Um, although I think that you know, uh, you know, they probably focused. I, I okay, uh, they focused a little bit more on the relationship. I think 
it's it's fine though it's okay um you know i'm like okay so you know sue falls in love with him fine i, I thought it was just like you know like that they made check off into the bad guy for the for the arc like when they went to the yeah. for the actual like um planet yeah planet and all like and also like you know and then um it also like led into like you know kirk giving spock is like this i'm giving you your evaluation like you know for this like, you yeah know, for your- so there's and so i i get conflicted when i saw that you know because i'm thinking okay well you know prime directive this and that which you don't hear a lot of you know um, this is kind of like Janeway level prime directive stuff, to be honest mm. with you. Um, and you're like, well, what do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> so, um, so, you know, uh, Captain Janeway has notoriously been a violator of the prime directive. Like, now we're going to interfere with this culture. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, Spock essentially kind of does this. And I'm like, mm, and then, and, and rightly so, Kirk chews him out. Okay. Well, it's like, you know, Kirk didn't, didn't chew him out, really. He basically said, like, you know, Spock, Command like, you know, decision. basically, like, you know, acted as well as he could based on the information that he had given. And Spock basically says, like, no, I, I fucked up, really. I, I'm paraphrasing here. Because yeah, Spock, okay. you know, we never, we never say that. Okay, maybe I, I kind of misread this, but, you know, I kind of got that impression out of it, so maybe I was wrong. Um, regardless, I still think that it's sort of like that like th- that's more interesting to me than some of the other stuff that surrounds like that, like in the second mm-hmm. volume. And I, I, and that's where my compliment is. However, they're just like, yeah, this is like, okay, I don't, okay. I don't really need to know all of these things, you know, like, um, you know, like, I think it's great when Lower Decks like just makes a joke out of some of the stuff. Like yeah. I can sit there and watch all the Voyager references. Ah, yeah, it's a macro virus, blah blah blah. You know, like oh, it's, it's a know, clown and all. Like yeah, you'll listen yeah, to yeah right. McKean. Yeah, like yeah, well, it's fear, and you know, I remember how you know it's all there, and you know, I mean, but you know, I don't, I don't think that. And if you watch the original Star Trek, the original series. It, like I said, I think I might have prefaced this before saying like, hey, the original series, I don't like every single episode of it, but also because it's television, also because it's early television, a lot of those things don't have a lot of like interseason, how do I want to say this, like continuity within themselves. Yeah. Do I what do I think of that? I think it's fine to be honest with you because remember it's the 1960s. There's not like it, there was not a Star Trek series before that. So yeah, it's like I, I do want to say that you know when I found out that the Tholian web, um, which you know, it's like I, I said I appreciate the development that um Lansing and Kelly and everyone did for, for the Tholians in this series. Mm-hmm. But when I saw that, you know, oh the Tholian web is like a third season episode, like I was like, uh oh. Yeah. This, yes, but you know, like that episode. That episode was actually pretty solid. Really, it's like I, yeah. I liked how um how how Spock, you know, like you know, was trying to like you know do his best to save Kirk, and I, I appreciated like you know how like seeing how he was just like you know like resolute in like what he was trying to do, and how Bones was just like you know calling him out for it. But I wanted like I really liked how 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 Spock was just like you know was just like emotionless about it how we just you know try I and mean, you could I mean we we knew how like you know it, it's easy to infer that you know like like that spock you know was just trying to like save his friend but at the same time you know bones is just like you know trying to like you know saying you know we were putting the ship in in like in danger for this and, like it was it was interesting to see you know how you know, to compare like how like you know like to infer like how bone how spock was trying trying to do like you know do right by his friend, but at the same time, like how you realize, like, wait a second, is some um, bones like you know coming to like the emotional, like you know, anxiety that was affecting everyone in this episode, and apparently he wasn't. So, yeah, so, yeah, that was actually that was actually kind of interesting, and yeah. also I I really did appreciate you know how um the Enterprise episodes in a Mirror Darkly um fed on you know the uh, the Mirror Universe um like position position of this as well even though it's like you know it's one thing like i'm watching the mirror universe stuff and like thing like wow it's like it's really interesting to see like a like how like the uh the evils like you know federation does things but it's like how do these people get anything 
done at all if you're like you constantly like you know trying to like you know, oh here's what i i'm trying to do it's like you know i'm like i'm like you know trying to like do the right thing i try like, you know here's my ambition i'm trying to like you know show you what what like how what i'm doing is the right thing and all like that kind of thing it's it's ridiculous so it's kind of like i like the idea of the mirror universe but it's kind of like a uh, situation where it's like you know it's something where i like to visit but i wouldn't like to live there in terms of an ongoing series and all, you know? Yeah. And I'm, and let's face it, that is the mirror universe. You know, the original episodes called mirror mirror mm-hmm. in the original television series. And it's, uh, you know, it it's has, a classic. It's, so, yeah. So here's it. And so here's some more thoughts from me on, on, on this and how they maybe could have made this better. What, um, first of all, maybe tone down some of those references because anybody who's reading this material is probably going to already know that stuff. And it's nice. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But I think it's kind of it. It almost feels like a crutch in this story. And I don't like that. Um, I think that I think that you can write good character stories without like you know referencing too much of the other stuff right um so you know i mean we don't have to like bring con out or anything like that um <laughs> but a lot of what star trek does in, in in the original television series um especially i think the first season is a very solid season if you have a lot of um a lot of writers that wrote for that are writers that you've heard of like richard matheson and and, and stuff like mm-hmm. that so it's like you know, these are their classics. Like, I think that honestly, I think Ray Bradbury could have written for this stuff uh, or um, for um, Star Trek in this series, but Harlan Ellison and stuff, you know, and, and of course, Dorothy Fontana, you know, who abbreviated her name, you know, yeah. because of the stigmas of time. But, you know, she wrote a lot of good stories um, for this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Har- I mean, like, we all know about Harlan Ellison's contribution, even though, like, he's kind of kind of bitter about how that turned out. Yeah, yes, absolutely. But what is important is, a, is the way that those stories, um, really, uh, told you know, told you about like the human condition through now, anal- you know, through analogies and metaphors. And I think it's, it, I think it really works. I was kind of looking for that in this, and so just to say. I was kind of looking for that here and I didn't see it. And it was kind of like, oh, that's why if I had seen that, I'd probably like rate this a lot higher. No, we don't necessarily need a race of black on one side and white on the other. And the other guys mm-hmm. white on the other side and black on the other. We don't need it to be that like, like, um, you know, that, yeah, that like in your face, but it could be something similar to that. And, st- and you know, so, and I think of it as like, yeah, and and I'm not like, and this is this is why my my um, you know my uh, my 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 lesson comes up here. It's like I'm not like not every episode is like that in the original series. And I totally acknowledge that, you know, but there are ones that are just like hit you right in the gut and make you think about things, and that's that's kind of what's missing from this. So I think if uh, you know. Uh, and and by the way, you do see this in the next generation as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the writers do this. They you know they they tell the different stories. You know, and I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's fantastic stuff. You know, um, yeah. It's like I think that you know, I mean, I didn't dislike anything that I read in these four volumes, but at the same time, I was like, I didn't realize read anything that uh, we go like, oh crap, man, like this is like you know what Star Trek should be you know, going forward and all. It's like and. You know, it's like I mean, I respect um, Lindsay and Kelly's passion, mm-hmm. like you know, for this. Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, it's like it's we're, we're just kind of like, you know, like doing a lot of stuff that we've seen before and all. I mean, on one hand, like I I appreciate the fact that they're trying to explore stuff that like you know was not explored in the original series, like Gary Seven and the Tholians. But at the same time, it's kind of like they don't do it in a way that makes you go like, oh, this is like you know. Like where we're going, what we want to go with these things for the for the future and all. It's like, oh, it's it like Star Trek Year Five overall verdict is not bad, but definitely not an essential read or not something I would like elevate to being like you know canon or or really head canon. I mean, it's it's not bad, but you know it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I, I'll go with that. Um, you know, um, I think that, and I wanted to throw this out there that um, there was a series that even, you know, Paramount CBS had kind of sanctioned called Star Trek continues. You can watch them on YouTube and oh, it's yeah. almost like, and their last episode does something similar to what this, the last volume and episodes do in this, you know, they kind of like, they talk about those, you know, those events leading into it, which I think is fine, you know, um, and that series is pretty, you know, it does have, um, by the way, it has Grant Imahara, uh, may he rest in peace, as the person who plays uh, Sulu. I think that's cool. Um, I, I've watched enough of like, you know, start of what you're, what, yeah, I've seen Star Trek continues as well. It's like, and I, I enjoyed it, even though it's like, you know, I think that the, the mirror universe stuff, you know, like, you know, Spock being like, you know, good and all kind of like, you know, betrays like the idea of the mirror universe and in, in the idea that, you know, it's kind of like, like a, like a, a series, like a universe where like, you know, evil or like impure impulses, like, you know, triumph rather than like, you know, like general good impulses, you know, like it's kind of like where he's just like, he should have like, you know, like, you know, like deposed Kirk in the sense like, you know, you were just, you know, not being true to the virtues of the empire and all. So you're, you're gone, man. Yeah. I think though, you know, like, and it's, I think, and this is where it's going to like, I think if you look at some of those stories, they don't, they, you know, in that particular, you know, there's many other fan series too, I just say. Um, yeah. But when you. Like Star, Star, Trek, Star Trek supports multitude, multitudes of visions. I'll say they do a little bit better job of the thing I was talking about, you know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And that's what, you know, I would encourage the writers of this, like, I'd say, hey, look, you know, if you wanted to do more stories that like throw out some of that stuff and then don't don't be leaning on it because it's almost it's almost a crutch and that's that's my bottom line i'd say it's it i give it a rating kind of similar to yours jason because mm -hmm. it's you know it's like um good but we but you know i've seen this playbook before right yeah um, and that's like, that's my that's my problem with it it's like okay. you know, we, we've seen like a lot of trick before and like you we kind of want to see like you know, something that you know defies our expectations and you know i, I will say that that's kind of like one thing i like seeing from from lower decks in the sense that you know it it takes a lot of what we've seen from trek just like twists it in ways that you know like we weren't expecting you know yeah yeah and yeah especially if you're gonna uh, i'd say this especially if you're going to use characters from the original series and you're like uh you know and i'd say that you know people have written stories like on the fringes right like oh yeah well here's you know i don't know it's you named the ship and the, they'll make you know their own stories which are fantastic that's great you know you should do that of course we're talking about like hey this is prime kind of stuff here prime universe mm -hmm. stuff for the yeah. Star Trek universe so you know <laughs> yeah, yeah so now that, you're now you're now you're like okay well show us the strengths of that you know that's all i'm saying <laughs> yeah so i mean like, you're talking like hey we're talking about, like the prime trek universe and like, i guess you know like you know, what, like the kind of universe we're talking about here like what kind of like you know like what um universe we're we're talking about in terms of like reviewing this series and all yeah, i mean hell even william shatner wrote something for the prime universe and it's kind of not great um <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so yeah um any other comments sir on this no i mean it's like like i said like i mean like, i think star trek year five is thoroughly not bad but you know in terms of like you know like being like in terms of like, like, trek is being like you know something be like you know pure trek canon like you know head canon for me it's like no but i still enjoy it i mean like i enjoyed it i enjoyed re um like rereading it for this podcast i'm um, researching it for this podcast and also, I don't definitely regret sending you those volumes for this podcast as well, John. Nope, and I certainly enjoyed reading them. Do you know what you're going to be talking about next time? Well, we're either going to be continuing this um trick trick um like stuff um with um like the hey you know like um IW like has the uh, like rights to trick and they're also done like a lore decks um, mini series. So we may be talking about this um, with another friend of mine. Or, um, you know, like, hey, it's like, you know, the current arc of um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is wrapped up. So I may be doing that as well. So whether or not, what it's going to be, it'll be a surprise. Womp, womp, womp. All right. And we'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right. Laters.